I'm making my way to Kansas City, Missouri, where I'm meeting up with my friend Scott, who is joining me for 200 miles of riding to the city of Omaha, Nebraska. It will be his first try at bicycle touring. Founded in 1830 and with a population of around 500,000, Kansas City is the 38th most populous city in the United States. It sits at the confluence of the Missouri and Kansas rivers. Its location, along with the Santa Fe, California, and Oregon trails passing close by, made Kansas City an important center for the westward expansion of the United States. The state of Kansas, which sits directly to the north of Missouri, is at the very heart of what is named Tornado Alley, where the highest frequency of tornadoes occur in the United States. Other states sitting in the very core of Tornado Alley are Northern Texas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, Nebraska, Iowa, and South Dakota. These tornadoes are most prevalent during late spring and early fall when southern warm humid air coming from the Gulf of Mexico converge with cold dry air coming from the Rocky Mountains to the west. The warm air rises through the colder air and creates an updraft that once it touches ground, it becomes a tornado. Missouri's got hills. Man. I'm whooped. I'm uh, almost there. Missouri is just non-stop rolling hills. It's almost like the topography is just bumps because if you go right or left, it doesn't matter. They're just ups and downs non-stop. It's a lot of fun, but I'm tired. I look stern. All right, Scott, get out of here. Show us the way. You want to see me fall is what you want to do. You're not going to fall. Remember, keep it at 15 miles an hour. <laughs> I'm worried. But uh, I think he can handle it. The guy flies the most amazing planes for Delta. So, and he's an Air Force guy. He knows what he's doing. Hey, guys. Morning. Beautiful day. With a population of about 1,700, the city of Weston was at one time the second largest port on the Missouri River and the second largest city in Missouri. By the 1850s, it docked over 265 steamboats at the port of Weston. After major floods like the 1881 flood redirected the river away from the city, along with fires and the effects of the Civil War, Weston contracted in growth. As we ride through, its historical charm is evident. With a population of about 11,000, Atchison, Kansas is the birthplace of famous aviator, pioneer, and author Amelia Earhart. In 1932, piloting a Lockheed Vega 5B aircraft, she became the first female aviator to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. Five years later, in 1937, she and fellow aviator Fred Noonan disappeared over the Pacific Ocean near Howland Island while attempting to circumnavigate the globe. Scott's done really good. I mean, he's figured out his uh, camping to some degree. <laughs> I think he needed to get a few more things that I told him about, but didn't didn't come together I guess but uh, he said he slept okay I think he'll sleep better tonight we got 60 miles to do <clears throat> to get to Falls City Nebraska and that'll be a good challenge for him he did we did 40 miles yesterday and that was a pretty pretty good haul so I think he proved himself and he did good going up those hills and stuff so I'm 30 miles out from Atkinson, heading to White Cloud. Had a bunch of hills for the first maybe 20 miles, like really good rolling hills. 
I kind of left Scott behind. He's ways back there. He called me, but I told him that I wanted to practice on my cadence and my technique, and I got to tell when it's too much fun not to go fast. I told him to take it easy and meet me at White Cloud, which is 10 miles away, and that we'd only be a few minutes apart. One of the coolest things about bicycle touring that I see so far is that you see the topography change throughout the days and you have such an appreciation for all the different terrain and elevations and slope. I mean, it's so cool. Wind direction, weather. It just has all the components for you to feel like you're out and about in nature. And even though you're using these highways and roads, you're still out seeing animals and all kinds of stuff. Endorphins are kicking and you just feel happy. It's just a happy place right now. And all day, except maybe at the end of the day when you're with anxiety trying to get somewhere and find a good place to lay your tent. All right, I'm gonna kick it back into a 18 or so. <laughs> With a population of about 180, the city of White Cloud is the seat of government for the Iowa tribe of Kansas and Nebraska. It was named after James White Cloud, son of Chief White Cloud of the Iowa people. During the mid to late 1800s, it flourished due to the steamboat traffic on the Missouri River. Named one of the eight wonders of Kansas, the four-state lookout in White Cloud is a viewing platform offering panoramic views of the Missouri River and at times with clear skies, a view of the four states of Kansas, Missouri, Nebraska, and Iowa. So I'm waiting on Scott on this uh, poster board next to the Missouri, which is explaining to me that uh, there's 12 scenic byways in Kansas. And this is the, what is it, the 10th, the Glacial Hills. is explaining 600,000 years ago, there were glaciers here that sort of formed all this um, landscape of bluffs against the river. Talking about how there's no real true natives of Kansas. They were all immigrants. Even the Native Americans came in here being pushed up, pushed, you know, westward. That's about all I learned from this poster that I can remember, but it's pretty cool. And you can go through Kansas and see all 12 byways and stop and read all this information about the state. It's pretty neat. I really enjoy reading this whole board. We ride out of Kansas and into Nebraska, making our way to Falls City. With a population of about 4,150, Falls City sits on the southeastern corner of Nebraska and on the north side of the Big Nemaha River. When founded in 1857, the town was located near a rock ledge with falls that was called the Falls of Nimaha, for which the city was named after. Over time, the river changed its course and the ledge and falls broke apart. I think Scott's pretty tired, but uh, I know that at the end of this, he's gonna be very proud. Are you gonna wanna do 60 miles tomorrow? Sure. Today was, was the end of what I could think I could do today, because I'm, I'm beat into our park, Stanton Park, in Falls City. After 60 miles of uh, riding today, it was pretty fun. Wind in our backs, just cruising. Scott had a hard day, but I think he he's loving it. He kind of figured out that he can make such distances for the first time ever. I think the most he's ever done is 20 miles. As we make our way through Nebraska, we stop in Brownville, which when established in 1854 was the largest town in the Nebraska Territory with a population of about 1,300. The rise of the railroad diverted the traffic away from the Missouri River, resulting in Brownville's contraction. Today, with a population of about 130, it offers historical buildings, museums, art galleries, wineries and restaurants for tourism. Local residents recommended that Scott and I camp in a city park high above the town. We're going to go do this trail 
from uh, Brownville to Nebraska City that everybody's telling us not to do it because there's too many obstructions and there's this flooded kind of silt sand all over the place. It's 26 miles long. But I think it's worth the effort. This trail is in really bad shape. All this silty lows gravel is what they call it or sand. It's glacier sand. It's pretty buttery. <laughs> this trail is not easy, especially in one handed. With the assistance of Rails to Trails Conservancy, the Steamboat Trace Trail sits on what was formerly the Burlington Northern Railroad Corridor from Brownville to just south of Nebraska City, covering 22 miles. Scott and I were warned not to take the trail as it was and still is as of winter of 2020 closed to all users due to a severe flood damage. The entire trail is under repair and it is scheduled to reopen by fall of 2021. The trail follows along the Missouri River as well as running through open farmland. A lot of it is forested with cottonwood trees, oaks and other deciduous trees as well as wildlife such as deer, turkey, squirrels, rabbits, snakes, bobcats, and more. After a long and slow day on the Steamboat Trace Trail and tackling steep hills coming into Nebraska City, we find a private campground to set our tents. So far, Scott and I have covered 144 miles in 4 days of riding, with another 50 miles to go the next day to get to Scott's final destination of Omaha, Nebraska. He has gotten stronger and more used to the routine as the days have passed by and it's evident that he will be bicycle touring again. Gonna fix it up and try to catch up to Scott up ahead. With an estimated population of close to 500,000, Omaha, Nebraska sits on the Missouri River 10 miles north of the Platte River and it is the 40th most populous state in the country. The city was nicknamed Gateway to the West after an early pioneer named William Brown saw the potential for attracting settlers by establishing the Lone Tree Ferry allowing the crossing of the Missouri River connecting Omaha and Council Bluff, Iowa. Coming into downtown Omaha. 